Hello, hello everyone. You should be able to hear me and uh, see me and see my screen. If not, let me know. So today I'm going to talk about energy, uh, part two, energy and work part two. And we're going to talk about, um, about bungee jumpers. As we started talking about bungee jumpers last, uh, last time, now, uh, I'm going to go in slightly more details. So problem one and problem two are going to be very similar, although problem two is very is much closer than uh, to what you need to do. Okay. And uh, so the idea here is that sometimes you cannot write down Newton's second law. Because Newton's second law implies you, that you know the forces and that the acceleration is usually constant. Whereas here, um, the acceleration is not constant because the more rope you have on the left-hand side, the more acceleration there will be. And uh, yeah, it just doesn't work like that. You could express the forces in terms of the length of the rope, perhaps. Uh, like, I mean, this this particular problem, I think you can solve it by just looking at the forces. However, we show you a different approach. You can solve problems on Newton's second law using energy, which is uh, which is quite fascinating. It's a completely different approach. So imagine you have a bungee jumper of mass 60 kilograms and uh, they're attached to a rope of 40 kilos. Find the speed of the bungee jumper by the time they reach the bottom. Okay, so how does that work? Well, you can say that, okay, the bungee jumper this one, this one has moved a distance. So the rope is 20 meters. So that's, that is 10 meters from here to here and another 10 meters, 10 meters. So the bungee jumper has moved down by 20 meters. So the change in rotational potential energy of the bungee, of the jumper, of the person is mg delta h, which is m0 multiplied by g multiplied by l. L is the length of the rope. But is that all the energy? Uh, what other energy conversions do we have? Oh, apologies. There's a new board. Uh, it's a new board and I have this. Right. What other energy conversions do we have here? So I understand gravitational potential energy of the person. Uh, the person loses gravitational potential energy. Yes, the can is converted to kinetic, of course. What else? Is that all? Is that all there is? Gravitational of the person. Um, well, no. the The rope is slack, so there's no ten there's no real tension in the rope, so we can ignore that. Imagine it's a chain, it's a rigid chain. So you can ignore the elastic potential. Uh, okay, good, good one, air resistance. Let's consider we, we, uh, we forget about air resistance. Let's do it in a vacuum. The spherical bungee jumper in a vacuum. But yes, that's a good point. What else? Like a really important one. Why did they give you the mass of the rope? 
Well, did, why did I give you the mass of the rope? Does it matter that the rope is 40 kilos and not 100 kilos? Does it make a difference? Of course, the rotational potential energy of the rope, because the rope is falling as well. So great change in GPE of the rope. Now, this could be done in two different ways. You can say that this rope, this piece of rope remains stationary. And this piece of rope falls down. So this piece of rope falls down and it's 20 kilos, it's half the rope. So it's 20 kilos and falls down by, now it, the center was here, now the center is here. So it falls down by 10 meters. So it's the mass of the rope, it's 20 times 10 times 10 meters, which is uh, 2000 joules. However, you could say, you could look at it in a different way. You can say, well, the center of the mass of the rope center of mass of the rope is here. Oh, sorry. That's so silly of me. The center of the mass of the rope is here. Now, when I, when the rope is straight, the center of mass is here. So changes gravitational potential energy of the center of mass of the rope. Okay, so uh, the mass of the rope is 40 now, yes, because it's the whole rope. So when it's folded in half, the center of mass is right here. Now, when it's straight, when the rope is straight, the center of mass is in the middle. That makes sense, right? Any questions on that? And it's 10, and it times, and now it only moves by five meters, but as you can see, the answer is still 2000. Joules. So it doesn't matter how you look at it. If you consider half the rope or the whole rope, uh, the change in gravitational potential energy is 2000. Does that make sense? Do you understand why G change in GPE is 2000? On a scale of zero to 10, please. Okay. Now, assuming the rope doesn't wobble, because if the rope wobbles, of course, it has some kinetic energy, but assuming the rope doesn't wobble and it's, it, it is perfectly straight, that means the, the, when, when it becomes, when it straightens out, so when you have this situation, uh, when you have this situation, Of the situation, the rope is stationary, and that means that all the energy goes into the person. So, from here, we can say that the kinetic energy of the person is equal to the change in gravitational potential energy of the person plus the change in gravitational potential energy of the rope. So which is M0GL plus the mass of the rope. So it's mass of the rope M times G multiplied by L over four because it falls by, the center of mass moves by L over four. Uh, it doesn't matter which way I use and this becomes M zero G well GL of M zero plus M over four. Now so a half M zero, that's the kinetic energy, and kinetic energy is equal to one half M zero V squared. And it's equal to GL M0 plus M over 4. So as you can see, 
mass does not cancel out as usual. As usual, usually mass cancels out here, it doesn't. So we have V is equal to 2GL, open bracket, M0 plus M over 4 over M0, square root. So 2 times 10 times 20 meters times the mass is 60 plus 10, because M over 4 is 10, over 60, square root. And this is approximately 2 times 10 times 20 times 70 over 60. 21.6, 21.6 meters per second. That's the speed of the bungee jumper when they reach the bottom. Okay, I'd prefer if you didn't do that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's fine. Um, now, what if the ju jumper didn't have a rope with no rope? With no rope, no rope, you would have, um, With no rope, you you would have can, uh, gravitational potential energy change in gravitational potential energy of the person would be equal to kinetic energy of the person. So that means that m zero g l because he falls he or she falls l meters is equal to one half m zero v squared. That's the that's the classical situation, right? Uh, very, you're very, you should be very familiar with that. So M cancels, you have V is equal to square root of 2GL, the very typical situation. So it's 2 times 10 times 20, and that will give you 20. Is it? Yeah, 20 meters per second. So as you can see, you fall faster with the rope. Now, if you are, if you, without a rope, your acceleration is G. Acceleration is G with, with no rope, because a free falling object has acceleration G. Uh, with a rope, acceleration, acceleration is greater than G. And that's, I find this really fascinating, honestly, because the acceleration of a bungee jumper is more than free fall. So a free falling bungee jumper accelerates faster than a free falling object. But of course, that means that the bungee jumper is not a free falling object. He's being pulled, they're being pulled down by the rope. That's why they are accelerating faster than you. Any questions? Does that make sense? Well, all the energy goes into the bungee jumper. Oh, then it then it turns into elastic. But as the rope stretches, it turns to elastic energy. And uh, then, yeah. And in the case with no rope, it is dissipated as heat. As the jump falls into the water, of course. Not onto the rocks. In both cases, it's dissipated as heat. Um, okay. There's some black humor. Um, uh, 
Okay. Find the acceleration of the jump once they have fallen five meters. So now we are getting into some like really detailed stuff. So it's the same same thing. Now um, I'm gonna I'm gonna pro I'm gonna do a general solution. So let's see what we can do here. So we have the bungee jumper. So here's the rope. And the bungee jumper starts here. And then let's say they have fallen X meters. I'll provide a more general solution than is required. And hopefully we'll see some dependency. So the bungee jumper has fallen X meters. Right. Now, we know that the center of the mass of the rope is here. Now, how far did the center of mass of the rope has fallen? Because that, that is the crucial question. Well, we can model this by saying, OK, the rope consists of two parts. Two equal parts. Two equal parts. The center of mass is here. And this rope. Well, this rope moves down. Moves down by X meters. No, I don't think it's 2.5. I'm 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 prone to thinking it's 1.25. But uh yeah, it's not It's uh it's a little bit complicated. I I want to do it in the, the least painful way possible. Because what happens is, this rope gets longer. OK. Uh, you can say, you can say that this rope, if this rope moves by x over x meters, x meters, now, half of this rope will move up here. So some of it will be here, some of it will be here. So basically what we did, we chopped off a length x of rope. We cut it in half, and we added it here. Does that make sense? We chopped off here, and we added it on, on at the bottom. I think that would probably be the best solution here. Best way of looking at it. X over 2. X over 2. Sorry for the yellow color. Um, the, then we need to work out the masses. Well, the mass of this section is m over 2. The mass of this section, well, let's work it out. It's going to be x over l multiplied by m, right? It's a fraction of the mass, right? So the mass of this bit is xm over l. 
And the fraction of this mass is xm over 2l and xm over 2l. And the position, well, this if this is 0, this is 0, uh, then the center of mass of this bit, oh my gosh, it's, it's a little bit tedious. So that's, that is, L over two so x center of mass so this is zero <laughs> uh, there's no easy way of doing it sorry this is this is this is re a really tedious process but okay let's see if we can um, if we can work it out is going to be m over two times zero because that's that's the position. So imagine we have this that this is the x axis. This is the x axis, and this is zero on the x axis. Now we need to find the center of mass of the rope. So we've taken this bit off, and we've added these bits here. So we need to find where the center of mass of these bits are. And this is L over two plus X over four. That's the position of that. So plus X M over two L, that's the mass multiplied by L over two plus X over four. Plus another time because it's X M over two L. It's the same mass at the same position over two plus X over two over four. Um, yeah, we can do m over 2 times 0. That's this this bit, the black the black one, plus this, and minus this. I'm, I'm, I'm doing negative mass. I'm doing negative mass minus x m over l multiplied by oh. Well, you can say it's negative position L over L over two minus X over two L over two minus X over two. Why is it X over four? Because the center of this little bob here is going to be X over four. We need the center of mass of this little bit. So it's it's half of this, so it's a quarter of that. So apologies for a super, super complicated thing. Um, has anyone managed to follow through with this? Has anyone managed to follow follow me the whole way through? It's okay if not. Okay, and divided by the mass of the rope, which is m, of course, which makes life easier. So x center of mass, this is zero, this is zero. We just need to expand, well, m cancels. m cancels, and uh, what we need is gonna be x over l. L over two plus X over four minus X over L, L over two minus X over two. Ah, oh, that's not too bad. We just need to open the brackets. So X L over two L plus X squared over four L minus xl over 2l plus x4 over x2 x squared over 2l. Oh, that's not too bad at all. This cancels. And we're left with uh, 3x squared over 4l. So that's how much the center of mass has fallen. Yeah. 
the center of mass of the rope. Does that make any sense? Like, see if x is L. If x is L, it's going to be 3L squared over 4L, which is 3 quarters of L. That doesn't make sense. Or does it? The rope should have fallen L over L over four, not three L over four. Okay. We need the center of mass of the rope. We've cut off this bit of the rope here, and we added two, p two bits here. We are left with a length of rope. Okay, so let's start. We, st we had a length of rope here. Now we've have a length of rope here, and we have two bits here. This is the zero line, zero line. So the masses of the rope, because this is this is x x over two l, x m over two l. This is x m over two l. This is m over 2, the mass, and this is L over 2 minus x multiplied by m over L. That's the mass of this bit. Now the position. The position of this one, x1. So, okay, let's label them. Let's label them M1. This is the mass of the part one. This is M2. This is M3. And this is M4. Now, X1 is zero because the position of this bit is zero. Now this bit, now it has become shorter. So it's, how much has it moved down? It oh well, by half. So x two is going to be L over two minus Oh, it's gonna be x over four. X L over uh, X over two. Oh yes, that's easy. X over two because it, the uh, if if you cut off if you cut off an x centimeters from the top, the center of mass moves by x over two down. Now the position of x three and x four is the same, and it's going to be L over two plus x over four. L over two plus x over four. So x center of mass. The center of mass is going to be m1x1 plus m2x2 plus m3x3 plus m4x4 divided by the total mass, which is m. Okay, so let's see if I can do that. So the mass m1 m over 2 at position 0 plus mass m2, which is L over 2 minus x over L multiplied by m multiplied by position 2 x over 2 plus m3 and x3, uh, m3 and m4 are the same. So it's 
xm divided by 2l multiplied by, so it's double that, multiplied by uh, the position, which is l over 2 plus x over 4 divided by m. So m cancels. And we're left with this bit. So it's going to be 1 half minus x over L multiplied by x over 2 plus two cancels, x over L. So it's going to be x over L L over 2 plus x over 4. And then m, m has cancelled. Okay. And let's see if we can get this. So it's going to be x over 4. Shouldn't be x over 2 minus L over 2. Where? x over 2 minus L over 2. I'm not sure where you need. Why is L over 2 positive in the last bracket? Oh, that's what that was a while ago. Okay. Okay. X over 4 minus X squared over 2L plus XL over 2L. Well, uh, plus x squared over 4L. So then it's going to be x okay, 3x over 4 3x over 4 minus x squared over 4. 3, 3 x over 4. Yes, x over 4 plus x over 2, that's 3 x over 4. A minus, uh, minus x squared over 4 L. x squared over 4 L, that's 2 x squared over 4 L, yes. Okay, so let's see if x is equal to L, then 3L over 4 minus L squared over 4L, which is L over 2, which makes sense. Yes, works. Works. Apologies. Um, so the this is wrong. I've made a mistake here somewhere. I'm not sure where exactly. I think Charlie has found the mistake. But, yeah. Okay. So the center of mass, center of mass of the rope, center of mass of the rope, rope falls by by uh, delta x, let's call it um, 3x over 4 minus 3x over 4 minus L squared over 4L. That's the expression. So the change in GPE of the rope, rope is equal to uh, mass of the rope multiplied by g multiplied by 3x over 4. M2. Mm, no, the first one I tried uh, not doing the M2. I tried uh, breaking it into five pieces. Like M2 was identical to M1. And then I had a small piece with a negative mass at the top. 
Of course, it it has a negative mass. I had to, I had to. Uh, it was a double negative, which I ignored, which I omitted by, well, negligence, horrible negligence. Yeah, I would have had the same same answer, but uh, let's forget about this bit. Forget about this embarrassment. It was a double negative, which I forgot. But anyways, mg. Change the GP of the rope. Change in GP of the person. Person is of course M zero G uh, uh, G X. Okay, so the kinetic energy of the person is M zero G X plus M G. I'm gonna. Oh, that doesn't make sense. That x squared x squared uh, mg 3x over 4 minus mg x squared over 4l okay and that's equal to one half m0 v squared I forgot the rope is falling as well. The kinetic energy of the rope. Because this this section of the rope, uh, the section of the rope, uh, section M, uh, X2, uh, M, M2 and M4, these two sections, they are falling as well with the person. So is kinetic energy of the rope is going to be M2, multiplied by half m2 multiplied by v squared plus one half of m4 multiplied by v squared so this is kinetic energy of the person so i'll, I'll have to delete that for now Okay. Uh, right. So this is one half, one half v squared, and multiplied by the mass. So the mass, we already know the mass. I didn't think it was would be so complicated, but okay. It's going to be uh, one half, one half. Minus x over l multiplied by m plus x m over two l. Okay, can we simplify this? Uh, One half v squared open bracket m over 2 minus xm over l plus xm over 2l. Uh, so it's going to be 1 half v squared m over 2 minus xm over 2l. I can simplify this as 1 quarter v squared, 1 quarter mv squared. Uh, multiplied by 1 minus x on L. Hmm, interesting. Okay, and that's the kinetic energy of the rope. So we have the kinetic energy of the person plus the kinetic energy of the rope has to equal to the change in rotational potential energy of the person plus the change in gravitational potential energy of the rope. And we have kinetic energy of the person is 1 half m0 v squared, plus kinetic energy of the rope is 1, qu one quarter m v squared, 1 minus x over l, equals change in gravitational potential energy of the person, m0 gx, plus mg 
3x over 4 minus x squared over 4l. Okay. Sounds horrible. Uh, might just as well be horrible. But um, what do what can I do here? Well, I'll open the brackets. Yeah. Um, I've got an expression. So this is conservation of energy, right? Conservation of energy. Conservation of energy. So I said kinetic energy of the person, kinetic of the rope. Now, apologies for these super complicated um, calculations, but this is worth doing by yourself because this is problem solving at, at its best. Yeah, so m trying to m managing the, all these all these values for mass. Give it a go and try to obtain the same the same result. I, I was doing a lot of maths here, right? There's a lot of maths, and um, now I want to focus on the physics part. All I've done is I found the expression for the kinetic energy and the gravitational energy, and I plugged them in here. They depend on x, of course. Kinetic energy depends on the velocity as well. All right, does that make sense? Does it make sense to you? Have, uh, have I lost you completely, or are you still on board? I mean, don't worry if you've missed the calculation of the, the expression finding the finding this I mean the center of mass falls by this kinetic energy of the rope well it's the speed of the moving part of the rope and it's only the, these two sections of the rope that are moving because this these two sections are stationary and these two parts are moving conservation of energy the well what you need to do is be able to accurately count if the rope moves down by x meters all you need is to accurately calculate how far the center of mass falls this is not easy but the expression is 3x over 4 minus x squared over 4l that's how much the center of mass falls if the person falls by x so as the as the person, as the jumper falls by x meters, center of the mass of the rope falls by this man. So the change in gravitational potential energy of the rope is this. The change in gravitational potential energy of the person is easy, mg delta mgx. Now the kinetic energy of the person makes perfect sense. The kinetic energy of the rope, as I said, the rope, we've split the rope into two, four parts. So this part is not moving. This is M1. This is, this is also not moving. M3, not moving. M2 is moving with the velocity V. And M4 is also moving with the velocity V. So the kinetic energy of the rope is equal to one half uh, M2 plus M4 multiplied by V squared. And if we remember from the previous bit that M2 is the length of this part, so it's L over 2 minus X. over 2 minus x, that's the length of the rope, divided by the total length of the rope and multiplied by the mass of the rope. And m4, which we are interested in, is the length of the rope, which is x over 2, uh, divided by l, so l, and multiplied by m. So it's xm over 2l. And that's how I got the, 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 the expression, expressions. Does that, does that make it more clear? 
where I got the expression for a kinetic energy of the rope. Okay. All right. So I've got a complicated expression, but it's just conservation of energy. I mean, it is complicated, but it is an expression for conservation of energy. It has two variables, and these two variables are very much interlinked. What are the two variables here? Variables as opposed to constants. Which two variables are not fixed, x and v? What is the relationship between x and v? Uh, Sanj Bharti, um, this is only this is a is this is a bit of a Suvat equation, and it's only and Suvat equations remind me they only work if acceleration is constant. And here, acceleration is not constant. Uh, Archie, is a good point, but that that again only works with a single body with a single energy conversion. This only works if uh, one half mv squared, one half mv squared is equal to one half, oh, sorry, mgh, mgh. And, and clearly this is not that situation. It's slightly more complicated. This is a complicated version of this. So no. Something from calculus maybe? Yes, V is dx dt, of course, remember? And also, it would be A is dv dt, another variable. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to open the brackets. It's one half m0 v squared plus one quarter m v squared minus one quarter m. Now I'm going to separate them into constants and variables. So the, there are two variables. So it's going to be um, m over 4l multiplied by v squared x equals now, um, here, it's going to be mg, m, m0, so it's m0gx, that's easy, plus 3mg over 4x minus mg over 4l multiplied by x squared. Really, not not. Well, it is a differential equation, but um, it is already a differential equation because v is d d d d x d t. So technically, yeah, it is. But we're gonna we're not gonna solve a differential equation. At least that's not what I want to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to differentiate both sides. 
d on dt. Okay, so from here, one half m0 multiplied by 2v multiplied by, I'm, I have to use the chain rule here. Um, okay, multiplied by dv dt. That's how it works. If I differentiate v squared, I'm using the chain rule. So dv squared on dt is equal to dv squared on dv multiplied by dv dt. So there's going to be 2v multiplied by dv dt. If you don't know this, don't worry. Don't worry too much. Um, this is chain. This is the ch this is the chain rule. I'm I'm showing you the principle. The question in the assignment is much, much easier. Uh, so this is the chain rule. Okay. DVDT plus one quarter M. Once again, the same chain rule, 2v multiplied by dv dt minus m over 4l. And here I use the product rule and the chain rule. So it's going to be 2v dv dt multiplied by x plus v squared multiplied by dx dt equals m0g dx dt plus three mg over 4 dx dt minus mg over 4l multiplied by 2x multiplied by dx dt. <laughs> but remember that dx dt is v and dv dt is a. But d a and acceleration and dx dt is v so it's going to be one half m0 multiplied by 2v multiplied by acceleration plus a quarter multiplied by 2mv multiplied by acceleration minus m 4l 2v multiplied by acceleration multiplied by x plus v squared multiplied by v equals m0g multiplied by v plus 3mg over 4 multiplied by v minus mg over 4l multiplied by 2x multiplied by v. So we have equation 1. Well, let's call it, yeah, equation. Let's call it equation two. And we have equation one. One. So from equation one, from one, express V in terms of X. That is possible. It's not the easiest thing to do, but it is possible. Oh, actually, it's not. It's it's actually very easy. Okay, I'll, it's so easy that I'm going to do it right now. So v squared is going to be equal to m zero g x plus m g three x over four minus x squared over four l over uh, one half 
m0 plus 1 quarter m1 minus x over l. So express v in terms of x. I've done that. And then stick it into the second one. Sub into 2. You obtaining a in terms of of x, which is what we need. And then sub sub x equals 5 meters to obtain the answer. Obtain the answer. Apologies. This way, this is way more complicated than I anticipated. Um, I didn't want to do the same question as the as the, in the example, but I last year I did a webinar where I did a very similar question, and um, I think I managed to get it not as difficult as this one. But that's that's the, that's the thing you have fundamentally. Look at equation one. Like, oh, wow, I've lost a lot of you. <laughs> uh, equation one, it has, it has V, V and X. So you can express V in terms of X. And equation two contains A, V and X. So because, but you, because you know V, you can stick that in and you can find A in terms of X, uh, in terms of X and V, and then sub V to get, to get A. So do this by yourself and uh, obtain, obtain the answer. I'm not going to waste more time. Now, the rest of the problems, the remaining problems, are much easier. So let's uh, look at problem three. An object slides down the walls of a container. The walls are smooth. The bottom has friction. How far from the center of the container will the object stop? Well, we need to consider the energy. So what is the initial energy of the system? What is the en initial energy of the system? So we have smooth, we have smooth walls here. Smooth. And there's a rough surface here. MGH, yes, the initial energy. We have gravitational potential energy of the of the of the object. And at the end, after the block has stopped, what is the energy? It is dissipated as heat, yeah? So it goes into thermal energy. Thermal. We don't know the specific heat capacity of the block. We don't know the, um, we don't, we don't know the specific heat capacity of the block. We don't know the mass of the, well, uh, yeah, we don't even know the mass of the block, and we don't know the temperature change of the block. So we, we there's no way we can calculate thermal energy. But what we can do is we can calculate the work done, because the work is force times distance. Okay. Rotational potential energy is m g. H is the mass of the block. And the work done is force times distance. So the force, the friction force, friction, friction, the friction force, and we know that if an object is sliding, the friction force is mu mg 
multiplied by the distance traveled. Okay, does that make sense? So GP is equal to work by friction. On a scale of 0 to 10, how much sense does that make? Do you understand the equation? OK. So m cancels. We don't need m. And we can calculate the distance traveled is gh over mu g. Oh, we don't, need, we don't even need g. g cancels. So it's going to be h divided by mu which is uh, 5 meters divided by 0 0.3, which is 50 over 3, which is what, 17, 16.7 meters, is that? Sixteen point seven meters. That's the distance traveled. Now that means it will travel two, then back, and then back, and back. So it will travel eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's sixteen meters. Then it will slide up, and then it will travel another zero point seven, zero point six, six, zero point seven meters. So it will stop 0 0.7 meters from here. Stop here. Stop here. So it, yeah, so does that make sense? So the block will start here. It will, and from the center, that is one meter. So that is 0 0.3 meters. 0 0.3 meters from center. So the object will travel 16.7 meters, but on, we are only counting the middle bit because we're not counting the edges because there's no friction. So it only loses energy once it's sliding on the on the rough surface. And it needs to travel 16.7 meters on the rough surface. So it will travel 16 meters in total, and then another 0.7 meters, stopping 0 0.3 meters from the center. It is. It is a nice. It is a nice question. Okay. Yes, it slides back and forth, back and forth, slides back and forth, reducing the amplitude every time. And uh, once it travels a total of sixteen point seven meters on the rough surface, it will stop. And this happens. Make sense? It's five meters per second. Okay. An object of mass one kilogram slides with no friction towards an unfixed wedge. So this wedge is allowed to move a fixed uh, five kilograms. The height of the wedge is 1.2 meters. Find the final speed of the mass and the wedge.
So we have two situations, two possible scenarios. What are the two possible scenarios? Can somebody identify them? That it gets over the hill or it doesn't. Yeah, exactly. Gets over the hill and doesn't. Gets over the hill. Over the hill. And doesn't. If it gets over the hill. That's interesting. If it gets over the hill. I wonder how I can prove that. Well, yes, there is a third, a balance is on top. <laughs> well done, three balances on top. This is on top, of course. Gets over the hill. Now, if it gets over the hill, the hill will not move after it will stop. And the mass will continue moving at five meters a second. It makes sense, although I forgot how to prove that. Gets over the hill. The hill will, it will move it initially, but then it will stop. And then the mass will continue moving at five meters. I think it's because energy is conserved and... Uh, so kinetic energy is conserved and momentum is conserved. Let's see if we can uh, use that. Okay, so this is M1, this is M2. So M1 V1 plus M2 V2 is equal to, sorry, M1 U1 plus M2 U2 is equal to m1 v1 plus m2 u v2. Now we know that this is zero. Okay. Then we have the kinetic energy. So one half m1 u1 squared plus zero equals one half m1 v1 squared plus one half m2 v2 squared. Okay, so we have m1 u1 equals m1 v1 plus m2 u2 and one half m1 u1 squared M1 U1 squared equals M1 V1 squared plus M2 V2 squared. So multiply this by Oh, 
We have two un two equations, two unknowns. Oh, they're solvable. Okay, let's um, let's um, let's try to solve it. So it's a one kilogram. One multiplied by five equals one multiplied by v one plus five multiplied by v two. One multiplied by twenty five equals 1 multiplied by v1 squared plus 5 multiplied by v2 squared. Can we do something about it? Well, yeah, if we square, if we square the top one, so square the top one is going to be 20, one squared is going to be 25 equals v1 squared plus 25 v2 squared plus 10 v1 v2 and uh, subtracting uh, we got 25 minus 25 0 equals this cancels we have 20 v2 squared plus 10 v 1v2. Okay, so v 10v2, open bracket, ten v two two v two plus v one equals zero. Okay, we have either either v2 equals 0 and that makes sense that's that's the final velocity of the of the wedge or v2 is equal to minus one half v1 okay that's an interesting scenario as well so if it doesn't go over the hill that means that v2 So V1, V1, and V2. Okay. Moves moves like this. So it, if it doesn't go over the hill. And if it balances on top, now they, they are together. And they move. And they move like that. Okay, well, the, no, it's not possible. Sorry, we've calculated it, and it will only be possible at a very specific uh, at a, at a very specific velocity, which we'll need, to, which we'll find in the next one. Okay, so that's um, not possible. So we have two 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 cases. Case one that v two is zero, and it means that it goes over, goes over, over, and this one uh, doesn't go over, go over. Right, and um, The hardest part is going to be to figure out whether it will or not go over. I have a feeling that I rushed through this part a little bit. So can I just step back and say this is conservation of energy, conservation of momentum. Conservation of momentum. And this part is conservation of kinetic energy. Of kinetic energy. So in the beginning, they were moving with velocity u1. 
and u2 is zero. And at the end, well, we don't know either, either they were moving with velocity v2 and v1 after. And then I substituted the values because I know the I know the ma masses mass is one and five, and uh, I use that. I hope that makes sense. Any questions? Any questions? Archie. I disagree because they will be, both be moving. At the time when the mass reaches the top, the hill will also be moving. So some of the kinetic energy is transferred to the hill. That's why we don't know for sure. Okay. We don't know for sure. Uh, we will figure that out. There, it, there is a method uh, to the madness. But yeah, it doesn't go over. So let's calculate v1 and v2 in the case that it doesn't go over because we still have the equation. So we know the this that v2 is minus one half v1. So from here, we can find that five is equal to v1 plus five multiplied by minus one half v1. And here I got five equals v1 minus 2.5 v1, 5 equals minus 1.5 v1. v1 is minus 5 over 1.5. And it kind of makes sense. It's negative. Uh, it's not a nice number, but 5 over 3 times 2, which is 10 thirds minus 3.3 .3 meters per second. So, which is minus 3.3 .3 meters per second. And this is half of that, which is 1.67 meters per second. Okay. All right, so we've established that. So if it doesn't. Now, the big question, does it go over the top? Does it go, does it? go over the top, the top. Well, we can uh, say, well, if, the, if it was stationary, then yes, it would. The other question we can ask ourselves, how can we reformulate this question? How fast to balance? How fast does it need to be to balance on top? That's the question that we need to answer, ask ourselves. All right, so um, initially we have the mass, which is moving at velocity u, which is unknown. And the, the this is stationary, is zero, u2 is zero. And after the collision, or after the interaction, they are on top. They're traveling with velocity v and a combined mass of six kilograms. Well, m plus n. So m, capital M. So from here, I have momentum. Momentum. So if it balances on top, they will move together. They will slide together. So the conservation of momentum is that mu is equal to 
m plus m multiplied by v. And energy, we have one half m u squared What would that be equal to? Can you help me? One half m plus m v squared, yes. Is that it? Is that the only energy? And MGH, yes, of course, plus MG, capital H. And from here, I can express U. I can make U the subject. U is M plus M over M multiplied by V and sub it into here. One half multiplied by M multiplied by M plus M squared over M squared multiplied by V squared equals one half M plus M V squared plus MGH. M cancels. So V squared, yeah, yikes. V, v squared, open bracket, M plus M squared over M minus M plus M equals 2 G M H. Okay, you know what, it's, well, I started, why not finish? It's going to be 2mgh over m plus m squared over m minus m plus m. Okay. So square root of 2 times 1 times 10 times uh, h, which is 1.2. This is m plus m, that is 6 over 6 squared over 1 minus 6. Um, 2 times 2.4, 24, divided by 36 minus 6. 36 minus 6 is uh, 30. It's going to be less than 1. But that's V, okay. Uh, divided by 6, that's 5, and this is 4. Square root of 0 0.8. Now U is, of course, m plus m over m v, which is 6 over 1 multiplied by v, square root of 0 0.8, and that is approximately 6 times square root of 0 0.8, 5.36, 5.36 5 meters per second. So no. It will not, uh, minimum speed to go over the hill is, is 5.36. So it will not go over the hill. Answer, it will not, will not go over. So that means V1 is five meters per second. V2 is 0 meters per second. Cool. I hope you appreciated this. Uh, problem 5 is very similar. 
it's just uh, it's find the minimum speed once again. It's you need to find the minimum speed. All right. So Archie, it didn't go over. Interestingly enough, this question. Oh, I really love this one. I'll I'll try to squeeze it in to the next week. I'll try to squeeze it in. Um, I absolutely love this question. You have a water cylinder. The water level is kept constant. At what height should you make a small opening to maximize L? So you can see that there's projectile motion. There is conservation of energy, of course. So there's a lot of fun stuff. And yeah. Does the wedge start moving as soon as the block cli starts climbing? Of course, because when the block is, you think about it, when the block is, is here, there's a normal reaction force. There's a normal reaction force on the block, and there's an equal and opposite force on the wedge. That the, means the wedge starts accelerating to the right. Block is decelerating. Acceleration of the block. And this is the acceleration of the wedge. And when, when it's on the other side, There is a, the, the reaction force on the wedge, the reaction force, and then, then there's the equal and opposite, equal and opposite reaction of this reaction. R reaction and reaction force. So the wedge will decelerate, acceleration of the wedge. Will decelerate and the this one will accelerate acceleration of the block and that's why it's first it accelerates and then it decelerates so the block the wedge will be in a different position but it will stop so if the, it doesn't make over the hill the block gains a certain amount of GPE which is converted to kinetic energy of the wedge wouldn't the block have to lose that GPE leaving the wedge with the same initial energy. Yeah, of course. So the first we have the block gives the energy to the wedge, and then the wedge gives that energy back to the block. But it only starts giving the energy back once it's over. If it doesn't go over, then no. If it doesn't go over, then uh, the wedge takes some of the energy of the of the of the of the block. It's a really nice question. Yeah. So you have a go at problem five, and have uh, try problem six by yourself. Uh, always welcome. All right, see you, see you next week then. Welcome.